Good morning, thank you for joining me. I hope everybody's well today. Welcome back to another Friday chat video. Tell you what, on Monday, I thought there wasn't going to be a Friday chat. I thought there wasn't going to be anything this week, frankly. <laughs> but here we are. I'm filming this Wednesday in one piece. If I seem a little bit odd or weird or scattered, this time yesterday, I was in an endoscopy suite with a camera down my throat, heavily sedated. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to, I've got stuff to show. Sorry, I'm looking around because I've got stuff to show you and talk about. But the majority of this video is going to be a catch up on my health and my gallbladder and all of that good stuff. It's been a week. It's been a week in Caroline land. <laughs> Um, but I thought I'd show you all the stuff first and that anybody who's not interested in my health and quite frankly I'm not at this point either so I wouldn't blame you can then turn off and those of you who are interested can stay and watch the story my story of one tale of woe or tale of well not woe anymore but it has been a bit of an up and down week so let me start by talking about the things I've got to talk to you about and I'm going to start off with um, advent calendars. Let's talk about advent calendars. Now, as you know, I said I was not buying a beauty advent calendar this year. I had two last year, I think, because Marks and Spencer very kindly sent me one. So I was opening that one every day in Vlogmas and also the Space NK one, which I was less happy with last year than I was when I had it the year before, I seem to recall. However, I have been trying to reduce the um, amount of beauty products that I have in my life this year. As you know, anybody who watches the Beauty Balance monthly videos that I've been putting out since February. Um, so buying a beauty advent calendar did not feel that appealing when I spent all year trying to use stuff up and try stuff and, and move it along and all of that stuff to then have a huge influx of products, a lot of which I'm probably not that interested in using, just seemed really counterintuitive. So I decided against that this year. However, I have bought myself an advent calendar, not a beauty one. It is, let me just pop my glasses on, um, this one here, this jigsaw puzzle advent calendar. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before. Somebody I know had told me about these and I was really interested and I thought, what a lovely idea. It's a really nice, cosy thing to do. I like jigsaws. I do jigsaws quite often, particularly in the autumn and winter months. And I just thought the idea of a jigsaw puzzle advent calendar where you do a little bit of the jigsaw every day it was such a nice idea. My bloody glasses are steaming up now. That's the picture. And I love that. I love a festive doorway. There's something nice about a festive doorway, isn't there? And then you open up the box and each day you open up one of the inside boxes, according to whatever number it is, and you do a little section of the jigsaw. Oh, it tells you all about it on the back then. It also comes with a big picture. Us oldies who wear glasses will be grateful for this, a big poster size version of the actual picture. So I'm very excited about that. I got it from Amazon. There's all sorts of different pictures and stuff. I'll link this one below um, in case anybody is interested. But I thought it was, a, it was around, I think it was around the £20 mark. But um, it's the type of thing you can pass on to someone else to do afterwards, isn't it? My, my mum and I always share jigsaws and um, pass them on to each other. And I just thought it was a really nice idea and it's not something that will be used up in one go. So in a few years I can use it again or I can pass it on to my mum and she can then pass it back to me another year. Um, yeah, I just thought that was a really lovely idea. So I'm really looking forward to doing that and I'm glad that it hasn't brought a whole load of new beauty products into my house as well. Now I'll show you next. Sorry, just let me have a sip of my coffee. Next I want to show you Ashley's advent calendar. Ashley hasn't had an advent calendar in years, but I got him this one as sort of, not, not a joke present, that's wrong, but um, when I was in hospital back in September, Ashley and William came to visit and they went to the hospital shop to get me a drink and they got this, um, a bag of this popcorn by a brand called Joe and Seth's. Um, I'd never heard of them, but this popcorn, it was caramel, salted caramel popcorn or something. It was the nicest popcorn ever. Suffice to say, I got about three pieces of it and they ate the lot of it. 
<laughs> between them. But then we investigated the brand because I'd never seen it anywhere else and it was so nice. And we bought some more of it from Amazon. They've got so, so many different flavours. I think they're also on the shopping channel. I'm sure I saw the guy on the shopping channel the other day. One of the shopping channels. I don't know which one. Um, anyway, they sell it on Amazon and they sell it. They've got their own website as well. They do loads and loads of different flavours. They do um, lots of savoury flavours, lots of sweet flavours. And I saw they had an advent calendar and I bought it for Ashley. This is the Joe and Seth's popcorn advent calendar. Thought that was really pretty. You, um, the front undoes. Let me just see if I can do it. Sorry, glass is back on again. Oh my goodness, mate. Yeah, this. Oh, maybe it. Am I doing it the right? Oh, it undoes that way. That's why I can't see it. See, I told you I was loopy today. That's what it looks like. And you've got all the different doors in there. Then you get a tiny bag of popcorn every day. And there's all different flavours. We've got classic caramel, mint chocolate, toffee, apple and cinnamon, apple pie and custard. Yum. Tiramisu, um, cinnamon roll, orange chocolate, banoffee pie, caramel white chocolate and raspberry, pumpkin spice, brandy butter, gingerbread and so on. But a whole host of different ones. Um, so I, I think that was about £30 that one I had a 50 if you sign up for their newsletter on their website they send you a 15% off so I had a 15% off for that one but I just thought that was a bit of fun that Ashley would enjoy and we'd enjoy trying the popcorn every day I'm hoping he's going to share a couple of bits of popcorn with me every day so fingers crossed Right, what else have I got to talk about? Let's talk briefly about reed diffusers. I said I would give you an update on those one pound reed diffusers I bought from Primark, um, which you will have seen in my, I think it was the last day in the life video I published. Um, two, they're, they're two, very different actually. The piney scented one was very good, really nice. I've got it in my downstairs low and I notice it every time I go in there. Um, the spicy one, absolutely hopeless can't smell it at all and also the liquid i mean they're only a pound i know but the liquid seems to go down really quickly in the spicy one not so much in the pine one so that's kind of weird so i would recommend the pine one but not the spicy one um still on reed diffusers i went into home bargains this morning while i was out and about to buy some deodorant and some toothpaste that was interesting wasn't it and i saw i saw the candles that go with these last time i was in and i didn't buy any yay go me sorry another sip of coffee but i couldn't resist these reed diffusers the candles sort of remind me of bath and body works packaging and these are the reed diffusers that go with they've got the candles in the same range same sense um how pretty are those and they are 1.99 each so we've got candy cane here and evergreen spruce here there's also a gingerbread biscuit one which i had in my basket and then sort of really only need two um and there's also a something spice which is really cute with nutcrackers on the pictures appealed to me more than the scent of that one so I managed to stop myself buying all four but um yeah I just thought those were a little bit of fun really good size as well for 1.99 and that doesn't look they're full to about there I would say but they're the same size as the home bargains Joe Malone um dupe ones no the Audi Joe Malone dupe ones are quite a good size you know and the packaging is so cute so so cute and the the Christmassy scenes on the jar um just I just really liked them and I thought that was a very good price so got those and I'll let you know what those are like still on home fragrance I picked this one up in Aldi this is the winter spice I had this last year and it is glorious it's a dupe for the white company one um, which I have also had and this is almost as good I would say the throw isn't quite as good but it packs a good strong punch it's orange cinnamon and clove and as it burns down you get the um, it sort of makes a hole down the middle and you get the um, light up bits around the edge where they've got the orange peel and the star anise and all of that and it's just it's a really nice cozy looking candle as it burns as well can't remember how much that one was. I'm wanting to say like 
499 but maybe not 699 honestly can't remember but they had them in when Carla was here this was so just over a week ago I guess next let's talk about boots I needed some new Chelsea boots failed to find any in the charity shops Carla and I went on the hunt for them and I couldn't the one pair I did like weren't in my size that's the downside of charity shopping, isn't it? Um, so I ordered a couple of pairs from New Look to choose from. Um, they have arrived yesterday. Um, that's the first one. I really like these. These are from the Wide Fit range. I haven't tried them on yet. Um, but they are not leather, obviously, being from New Look. And I am worried that this patent finish, can you see it's sort of slightly textured? Um, I'm worried that it will peel. I think you get one knock and it will peel and then the rest of it will sort of peel as well. I, I have experience of cheap patent. Um, I do like them. They were 27 99 I'll link these in the description box below as well and the other pair um, in case anybody's interested. They were doing 25% off boots. Um, so these were 27 99 less 25%. Um, I'm not sure if they're still doing it or not. But I think those ones are not going to be for me. I like them very much, but I feel like I'm gonna, they're not going to last well. I'm very heavy on shoes and boots as well. I'm very clumpy and clumsy. So the other pair I bought or ordered, um, these were $35.99. Then again, less 25%. These are not from the wide fit range, but they, uh, they're not too pointy or anything. So I feel hopefully they will fit okay. Um, I really like the little gold detailing inside the heel here. I think that just sort of elevates them a little bit, doesn't it? Um, they do up with a zip there. And these feel a little bit more sturdy. They've got sort of, uh, I guess, a, somewhere between a round and an almond toe. Not 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 too clumpy. And um, the, the, I, I see a lot of Chelsea boots and they've got a very round toe. And I wanted something a little bit less, you know, not, not, I don't, don't no, I, there are no words in my sentence. I'm just saying words that don't actually mean anything. So I wanted something that looked like this. Um, and then they've got a bit of texture on the back there as well. I think, if, assuming these ones fit, I think I'm going to keep these and return the others. Right, next. Very quick stocking filler idea for men. Not just for men, but people often ask me, present ideas for men. I'm not great at present ideas for men, I know. I came up with a couple last year. Um, but this one is something that I bought for myself. In fact, this is not just for men, this is for anybody who's got a car. So it could be like a teenager with their first car or something. Um, it is a little bin for your car that fits down in the little pocket of the door. So good. I bought this earlier this year for myself. Sorry if it's a bit grubby, I've just been and got it out of the car and emptied it to show you. It's got a little, it sits sideways, so in the pocket like that, and like that sort of thing, and you press down at the top, it's got a um, spring, spring lid, and you press it down to put stuff in, and it comes with a little roll of bin bags as well that fit it perfectly. So, um, yeah, I just think for anyone who's got a car, it's sweet wrappers and chewing gum wrappers and bits of stuff the kids leave in there and all of that sort of stuff. It's just useful. My car has been a lot tidier since I had this than it used to be. So I would recommend that. I will pop a link in the description box below. It's not expensive. It's from Amazon. Right, one more thing to show you as well, which is a gift that I have bought for Will and his girlfriend Georgie. We are back on the Joe and Seth's popcorn train again. It comes in this box and it is, I don't, I don't know if it says, it's like a film night popcorn um, hamper type of thing. Quite like the fact it came in a branded box. Um, and then inside you get, it's just a, a load of popcorn basically, but mature cheddar cheese popcorn. You've got a salted caramel popcorn, a toffee apple and cinnamon popcorn. It's going to be a popcorn in Christmas, isn't it? Um, a milk chocolate popcorn bites, a caramel and Belgian chocolate and a peanut butter popcorn. Um, I am going to get a DVD 
and add it to the box, possibly two DVDs, and add them to the box to make it a proper sort of film night um, popcorn hamper. That is my plan. And that came from Amazon, and it was really good value for the amount of popcorn it had in it. And again, I will link it in the description box below. How have I been talking for almost 17 minutes already? That is ridiculous, isn't it? Right, that's everything I've got to show you. So if you don't want an update on me, my gallbladder, and the ins and outs of that, click off now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next For those of you who do want an update on me and my gallbladder and the ins and outs of it all, strap in. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably know some of this already because I've posted about it over there. But um, I went in to have my gallbladder removed last Wednesday, the 1st of November. Um, I wasn't very, I was half looking forward to having it over with. That was very much on my mind, being pleased to have it over with when it was done and over with. And the other half was a bit dreading it. I haven't had a general anaesthetic for a very, very long time since I was a teenager and I was very nervous about that. Complete control freak here, obviously, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, anyway, I went in had the operation, it was all fine, um, I came out again at the same day, came home, they said I should be back to normal in seven to ten days, and I had four puncture, it was lock keyhole surgery, and I have four little neat um, wounds on my abdomen, and they gave me a whole host of painkillers to bring home with me, I did take quite a lot of painkillers the first two days. By Friday I was aware that something wasn't right, I'm not going to go into loads of ins and outs on here because it's <laughs> not particularly pleasant and not the sort of thing you want to discuss on YouTube, but um, yeah, I, I was aware from previous experience from, from my previous hospital stay back in September, I was aware of the signs that of a sort of early liver failure and I, I felt like I was not maybe back in that but I felt like uh, that, that there was a good chance that things weren't right. I phoned the hospital and they sort of they, they said it, it, you know it's probably just your your kidneys aren't quite back to front. Sometimes after a general anaesthetic it's not quite right and uh, okay I said so I left it until Monday. By Monday things were still not as they should be. Um, I was feeling almost like fluey in myself. My wounds were healing well, but I was feeling not good. And I knew the signs. I knew the signs. I phoned the hospital again and they, they did do a little bit of trying to fob me off. I have to say, I did have to advocate quite strongly for myself. And eventually my, my surgeon, not eventually, that's not true, by nine o'clock in the morning or half past eight, I think, he'd actually called me back on Monday morning. And, um, he said, can you come into Torbay Hospital this morning at 10 o'clock and um, we'll have a look. Um, so I went into Torbay Hospital Monday morning um, at 10 o'clock. He was there straight away, came and met me. And um, he said, yeah, you need a scan and you need some blood work doing. And again, long story short, had a scan, had my blood work done. And I was right. I was in the early stages of liver failure. And they, they, although it didn't show up on the scan, um, a gallstone was remaining in my bile duct, which was blocking my bile duct, and so my bile wasn't filtering through the system properly and was elsewhere in my body and making me not very well at all. But uh, by yesterday, I had jaundiced eyes. So this was all, by the time that was all done, it was about um, two o'clock, three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Um, my doctor said to me, can you come in tomorrow morning for an endoscopy and we will um, investigate your bile duct and remove any offending stone that is there. So that's what I did yesterday. I went and had an endoscopy um, the, under sedation. Horrible. Didn't enjoy it at all. However, I have to say the... Um, endoscopy staff, the endoscopy team at Torbay Hospital, just amazing, so efficient, so lovely, so kind. It was a top tier NHS five star experience, that was it, it really was. And the doctor who did it was lovely. They were, all the nurses were telling me, oh, if you're gonna have an endoscopy, you want, the, you want this guy to do it, he's the top guy, he's brilliant. 
and they found the gallstone it was an eight millimeter gallstone and removed it and i instantly started feeling better when i came around from the sedation i do feel a bit w dopey and odd but um it's 24 hours on now and um yeah i feel so much better in myself it's the first time i've put on makeup since uh, be before i went in for the first operation um so yeah i am now i'm really just keeping everything crossed that this is it now this is it and it's all done and i'm gonna just continue to get better and feel better and it's but it's been a bit of a traumatic time <laughs> it's felt traumatic to me obviously it goes without saying there are people in the world with far bigger scarier worrying problems and i am just a person with a dodgy gallbladder and you know the operation didn't go brilliantly and i need another i'm very aware that it's not a life-threatening emergency but it's my youtube channel and my story and I, uh, you know it has been traumatic for me and i make no apology for that because i only live in my life i don't live in somebody else's life you know <laughs> so um yeah it, it's been a lot i am glad i feel like touch wood we are now heading in the right direction and the moral of this story really is to definitely educate yourself on the thing that is wrong with you learn as much about the although they give you a lot of information when i was discharged they said that you they give you a booklet of um you know this might happen and that might happen and that could be a side effect and that could be the things that indicated to me that i was not right were not um things that were flagged in, in any of this paperwork and had I not had previous experience of them and had I hadn't researched my condition quite thoroughly on reputable websites, um, I would not necessarily have recognised those things and I could have been the patient that my surgeon told me on Monday um, that there was, because I, I was asking him how often this happened to people, this, you know, have, still having a gallstone after you've had your gallbladder removed. And he said that he had another patient who currently in hospital as an inpatient who had their um, gallbladder removed three weeks ago, who was now an inpatient with pancreatitis, which can be life threatening. And that is what my issues could have developed into had I left them. So I'm really grateful that I am a person who is able to advocate for themselves and is um aware of when something's not right be and and you know i just i educate myself about this the what's going on and knowing the signs when something isn't right and just you know make don't, don't leave it too long i guess is what i'm saying i don't know what i'm saying really <laughs> i feel like this has been very um here and there but that's the update anyway i'm still in one piece still here to tell the tale um we are off to london this weekend <laughs> this is another thing it's we were due to go to london well originally my operation was booked for the 15th of november um, we booked this weekend to go to london to see will will's my son for anybody who doesn't know um to to go to london to see will and we thought we'll fit it in just before i go for the operation then my operation was brought forward to the 1st of November and I thought well that still gives me 10 days or 9 days before we go so it should be alright, the recovery says 7 to 10 days, don't have to do too much in London, you know I can take it easy. And then of course on Monday I was back in hospital with the, um, the endoscopy yesterday, I thought there's literally no chance I'm going to be going to London at all. But in actual fact, I, I feel weller today than I have done. Now, now they've sorted the bile business out, you know, my liver's fingers crossed going back to normal and all of that. I actually feel better than I felt since the first operation. So I think, we're, fingers crossed, we're going to be all right for London. So, yeah. Thank you for listening to this complete ramble. I'm sorry if I sound unhinged. I, I suspect I probably do. I'll pop all the links down in the description box for anybody who's interested. And um, I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.